Welcome to the People and Ideas Show. With us today, we have a special guest. He is a nurse. He is an author. He is a medical journalist. He is a Rotarian, okay? And at the same time, he is a nurse trainer. He is the CEO of My Health Publications. So, let's welcome Lubega Martin to the show. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Timothy. Who is Lubega Martin? Lubega Martin is a 26-year-old Ugandan male. Just celebrated my birthday a few days back. Martin is a nurse. I'm an author, as you earlier said. Um, in two nurses training, I'm a Rotarian, I'm a single man, and uh, I'm also the executive director of my health publications. Yeah, that's a brief summary of who Lubega Martin is. Rotarian, where, 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 where are you sectioned for the Rotary Club? Like, uh, You know, Rotary is about giving back to the community, uh, coming together as people who want to to improve the welfare of other people. So I joined Rotary when I was an intern in Soroti Regional Referral Hospital. So I joined Rotary Club of Soroti Central, where today I serve as the chairperson of the Maternal and Child Health Committee of the club. Yeah. Okay, that's nice about you. Mm. So let's get to the gist of the, of the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the gentleman that I happen to share a class with in medical school. We battled together with anatomy, okay? We battled with physiology, oh my. Who can forget the days of pharmacology in medical school? So this is the gentleman that we happen to share with a class in the university. And uh, I must say, Martin, he's the very first guy that believed in me to do content work. He stood in for me to do the work of designing the college magazine, the first of its kind. So, Martin, take us. Around that time, you used to be the head of publications. Is that where your publication story begins from? Uh, well, uh, I began getting, okay, I got the passion for writing way back in high school. I have several trophies in secondary, in high school, for essay writing, for those who I studied with, can, re can relate. Mm -hmm. I, I began winning trophies as early as senior two. Senior two, I won a trophy. Senior three, I won a trophy. Senior five, I won a trophy. And all those trophies were in AC writing. By then, I was the president of the environmental club. So we would compete in uh, competitions by WWF and Nature Uganda on how to improve the communities. Uh, environmental protection uh, initiatives. So uh, we would write essays, develop ideas as students, and we share them to the public through our writing. So for all those three consecutive times, I, I would write and win. So after when I joined university, uh, you understand the schedules of medical school, a very busy area, but I would get time, write articles, submit them to magazines around the university, the St. Augustine magazine, and other association magazines in the college. Friends who knew me, mm -hmm. who knew me would contact me, and write for them essays, and they submit in their magazines of their colleges. Even in medical school, I would, uh, I would write in the Makere Medical Journal. And uh, when time came, after, I think that was in 2017, when I was voted uh, or appointed by the then uh, college president, Semitara Huntington, as the head of publications, uh, I took up that office. And as head of publications, I was responsible for making sure that we publish the Makele Medical Journal, the Makele Pharmacy Journal. And uh, that's the time when I realized that there are many students in the college who are not in position to write scientific work, but they would want to write articles around the social life of medical school, uh, the way of life in medical school. So that's how I initiated the Makerere Medical, uh, the, the Pulse magazine, which uh, I, I would want to appreciate you for having accepted to work with me as mm -hmm. one of our editorial team. We did a lot of work. We published the first 
Pulse magazine up to now. It can be accessed on the college website. Mm. It was basically about the way of life in medical school. Never, no one ever tells that story, but in that Pulse magazine, we try to tell the story, the life of medical school, outside the science, the, the, the scientific articles we put in this me medical journal and the pharmacy journal. Oh, that was a marathon. <laughs> Okay. I, uh, indeed, I get. That is a very good brief background of yeah, where yeah. this publication starts yeah. from. So I must say, uh, when Martin was about to finish his university, he contacted me and said, Tim, I'm working on something big. And I have it in my hands. This, this changed Martin away from the university. Martin, how did you come up to an idea of this book, My Pregnancy? You know, as a medical student, you have an opportunity to go to the hospitals, you see what the patients are going through, and the training in Makerere gives us an opportunity to identify problems and try to find solutions. So as I was in senior three, uh, I was in uh, third year. Third year. Uh, that was third year, second semester. We were doing our midwifery rotation in Kawempe National Referral Hospital, I realized that there are a number of challenges our mothers go through during that period, but especially during the antenatal care period. We don't give them enough information. And the challenge is that uh, the health workers know, they know, they have the knowledge, they have the skills, but the limitations of the time, the, the overwhelming turn up of patients, at times limits the interaction, the one-on-one -on -one interaction between the nurses or midwives and their patients. So you realize that even after attending a number of antenatal, talk, antenatal sessions, the group antenatal sessions, the ones that we have in Kawempe, the patient is not in position to understand the importance of attending these sessions. There are many questions that remain unanswered. And in our setting here in Kampala and in our generation, we are having women who want to know. We are having patients who want to know what is happening in their lives. We are having patients who want to know what you're doing for them. They want to know. So you realize that as a nurse, it's our responsibility to make sure that the patients are informed. They can be in position to make righteous decisions. A mother should be knowing that I, I should do an ultrasound scan during when I'm pregnant. A mother should know that I should take such and such a meal when I'm pregnant. A mother should know that I should attend and mental care eight times and all as required by my health team. Mm -hmm. So I realized that all the things were not actually tackled in the brief interactions we had. So I thought I would actually come up with uh, an idea, something that can change the status quo. So I sat down. My, I, my initial idea actually was to develop a video to develop videos that our young ladies can get on their smartphones, they can get on YouTube, mm -hmm. they run them, they they watch everything. But as a student that time, that would be so costly for me. So I scripted, shared it with one of my lecturers. Uh, I actually appreciate her so much. That is uh, Madame Nam Terry Mariam. She really did some good work for me. She reviewed my work, she advised me that actually we can write a book out of this script that you've written. So the script that was actually intended to be a video clip to run on social media and on YouTube, it turned out into this book, the My Pregnancy Handbook. So this is the book that you're having today. It is a simple health education tool providing authentic health information concerning pregnancy to mothers. We understand there are very many sources of information, internet, people Google a lot, but at sometimes that information is not trusted, it's not authentic. But with the My Pregnancy Handbook, you know that you have a one-stop center for all information you need about pregnancy. Although I, dis I, I added a disclaimer that it's not, a patient should not stop going to their healthcare providers because of this book. Mm -hmm. But I am sure it can give you at least 90% of the information you need while you're pregnant. While you're pregnant. Yeah. So I get to realize in everything that you're saying that uh, if people want to make uh, beautiful 
escalating things in life, first they must realize that there's a problem. If people look at the world and find out where the problem is, yeah. and then when they see the problem, they develop ideas. Yeah. And when they develop ideas, they push yeah. ideas to become projects and to become things that will change people's life. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you did. Yeah. That is very nice. So, what has this book impacted so far? What has it achieved? Uh, the My Pregnancy Handbook was launched in 2019 as I was leaving university. Uh, after it had been reviewed by senior obstetricians, midwives, even the patients, we interacted with patients, they gave us their opinion mm. about the book. So we published it, it got out, we began selling. Right now, I think we celebrate over 500 copies wow. in circulation, mm -hmm. others are using these books. We have partnered with a number of clinics around who are using these books in their antenatal talks. We are getting a number of ref, uh, referrals, people who ref, uh, health workers are referring their mothers to come and use these books. And also, this book has won awards mm -hmm. in 2020. Uh, it was voted as one of the nine international uh, students projects for health wow. and uh, I was supposed to be in Mexico. It was for COVID that I didn't travel to Mexico, but I was supposed to go to Mexico to to attend the international uh, conference by TAF and uh, FEMA. So we missed just simply because of COVID, but still we got some sponsorship. We got mentorship. They yes. tried to mentor us on how I, we can grow this idea. I have a team of people that I actually work with. I'm not alone. Okay. I'm the vision bearer, but I have uh, Madam Namtebi here. I have uh, Timois here. We have Imelda. We have uh, uh, Edwin, Edwin Chigozi. We have Trinamasiko. All these are guys that have actually helped me push. So this was when we had uh, hosted uh, the social innovation in health team that okay. had come to inspect our work. They wanted to see what we are doing. Social mm -hmm. Health in Innovation Hub is in Makere University School of Public Health. They visited us to see what we are doing. And at the end, we actually turned out as winners of 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 uh, this award okay from the social innovation in health awards mm -hmm. uh, this is an award that was given to the my uh, pregnancy project as an outstanding social innovation in health so we have gotten another award uh, other awards we've gotten recognized by ministry of health uh, last year we we merged as finalists in the innovation in health awards in the heroes in health awards organized by Ministry of Health and uh, Extraordinary Media. And we were recognized. We are among the last three finalists. You can imagine mm -hmm. being among the last three innovators in health in the entire country. That, was, that shows you that we are doing some good work and people are appreciating. So when you, if you can see this uh, image here, we had, uh, this is the time we collected uh, the award by Social Innovation in Health Awards. Uh, I was escorted by my lecturers. This is Madam Mariam here. We got the award and it was a big push uh, for us as a, as a team. We continue to do a lot of things. We getting good feedback from our patients, those who have helped. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, during the lockdown, for example, we had uh, Antinento Kusande. Yes, Antinento, Antinento Kusande. Kusande campaign. We were offering free online Antinento classes. So all you needed is to get our link, log in, and you attend. Because you understand that the COVID-19 pandemic uh, disrupted a number of things. At times, women would not move to go to their clinics where they were having antenatal uh, uh, checkups from. So this antenatal kusande came as an alternative. So women would log in. There's a time we would have 50 plus women logging in and they would ask questions. I would invite experts, invite pharmacists, doctors, midwives, nurses, and they would share their information free of charge. So that's what we are doing as the My Pregnancy team. So there is much that we can talk about this book for the whole one hour. But Martin, where can where can my, my, my friends get this book? Where can they find it? Yeah, so uh, this book now, you can get it from our agents. We have agents around Kampala. Mm -hmm. 
you can get it from me directly if you have my contact or if you go to our social media page on Twitter, you can get uh, uh, my contact and you're in position to get it. You can get it from Uganda Bookshop, Alistok Bookshop. You can also get it from Amazon. Uh, recently went to Amazon. So those fans, our team, our, our ladies who have been requesting for soft copies, people want to read on their iPhones, they want to read on their iPads. So you can go to Amazon, get a copy of the My Pregnancy Handbook. The My Pregnancy Handbook is a very interesting book in a way, that it is very colored. If, if you can see, I understand the reading culture here is may not be so good, but because of the colorful text to put in here, the graphics designs, the images, here, yeah, they keep okay. the person reading. They show you the 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 the, the, the wording and mm. the image, so mm. you in, it is very easy for you to actually get what you need to understand in the book. Yeah, we are also taking steps to see how we can translate the book. We've gotten uh, feedback from some of our clients who think we are only facilitating people who are going to school, people who can read English. So we are trying to bring on partners. We are already in touch with a team from Macquarie University. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are trying to make sure that we can translate this book to five local languages. So soon we shall have five languages, five editions of this book in local languages. And they will be freely access they will be accessible to, to the public to buy and use this book. So that we need to improve the maternal rates, the maternal mortality rates in the country. We realize that one of the causes of maternal mortality rates, the high rates in the country, is simply because of lack of knowledge. So we need to continue giving our mothers knowledge. We need to give the public knowledge. Even the men need to be involved. Mm -hmm. You need to give them knowledge. You need to give them information so that they're in position to support the mothers, they're in position to take righteous decisions. So that's what we are doing as my pregnancy team. We are waking up each and every day to make sure that we can support mothers with information. We can guide them. Actually, for those, for all our clients, after you've bought my book, my contacts are here. You get free consultation. You, you're free to call me. I will consult and I will give you free consultation. So that's what we are doing as my pregnancy handbook. Yeah. Okay, so to wrap it up, Martin, you know, we are doing this not necessarily to, to, to boost of what we have done, yeah. but to inspire, yeah. okay? To, to tell those young kids that these things are doable. Yeah. These things, you can have an idea mm two months down the road, it turns into a very big project. Yeah. So what would you tell that person that is watching us, that student that thinks that being in university, you can only do these things when you're out of the university? Please talk to them, like in a minute. Yeah, thank you, Timo. One thing I can tell people is that, basically young students, you need to focus on the challenges that are affecting people. Look for, this, look for solutions for those challenges that are affecting people. Mm -hmm. At times, you may not so much focus on money because I did this with little money and support of my team members. But if you have a good idea, you will have people on your team. You will, people will come to join you to push the idea. Even the funders will come like that. So one thing I tell young university students, continue to think, continue to identify challenges that are affecting people. In any of your fields, you may be a social worker, look out for social uh, challenges. You may be a teacher, look out for the challenges that are affecting the education mm -hmm. sector. If you're a nurse, look out how, are, how can we improve patient care on the wards and take a step. You know, at times we read these articles, people publish these challenges, but nothing is done about them. Where we are going, the world needs people who can translate these things into solutions. Get a solution that can work, a solution that can work for the public, mm -hmm. a solution that the public can accept. Don't give up because it's not an easy journey. Mm -hmm. Pushing a new idea is never easy. I don't know how many letters I wrote to various organizations to sponsor this, but we, we are here, we are moving. With or without partners, we are moving. 
Yes. Okay, I think I even remember one time when you almost betted your internship money to to, to print these books. <laughs> yeah. I, I happened to tell me that Martin, I say Timothy, uh, I don't have money, but uh, I bet all my internship money <laughs> on this thing. I yeah, do happen times, to remember that time. At times when you have an idea, you don't want it to die. You don't want an idea to die. People may take long to understand or appreciate your idea, but if you believe it's an idea that is going to help people, keep to it, support it, give it your all. Other people will see you moving and they will come on board. You're in a country where people want things that are moving. So you keep pushing your idea, people will come on board. There's no idea that is small as long as it's going to solve the challenges of the people people will support you will get the support eventually okay that's a wrap up for today uh thank you for watching us please follow us on our social platforms and please get to contact martin he's a very resourceful guy he has all the health pregnancy he's enhanced he does everything so please get in touch with him on his socials and you will be left with wonders and marvel inside of you please stay tuned for the next episode God bless you.